Good morning, everyone. Um, it's, it's, it's really great to be here. And when I went on the website of North Shipping, and I see the theme um, which is reoccurring in Africa today, innovative thinking and passion to be different. So my uh, presentation this morning is on the evolving story in Africa, the narrative of African rising, but rising sustainably um, and reliably. Um, I represent Genesis Energy. We are a private power developer based out of London with visible investment across Africa. We have a vision which was created in 2005, which is to light up Africa one community at a time. Well, we all know the story of Africa. 1.2 billion people growing to be uh, about 2.5 billion by 2050. Um, there's enormous resources, thousands of miles of hydro uh, potential, wind, solar, geothermal, and so on. Countries are focusing on good governance, um, clear socioeconomic plans, and you know, the government realized, governments in Africa realized that if you, if you want to attract investment, if you want to develop your country, you need to be more transparent, governance needs to be taken more seriously, businesses should start with a handshake, not a shakedown. Um, and, and so all of these good things are starting to happen in Africa. And um, the continent possess great opportunities for the serious um, and of course for the curious investors who, who would dare venture out into this lovely continent. The many challenges um, that we all know of visibly so for those of us who are very active in the continent, we find that um, in order for us to go green, old habits die hard. Fossil fuels, gas, um, diesel, are readily available across the continent, uh, coal plant in South Africa, and all of this, all of this uh, old habits of producing electrons um, are getting, it's very difficult to change. The resources to also change, to create uh, more renewable solutions of hydro, solar, uh, geothermal are slow in coming. Um, there's also the regulatory op opacity. The energy mix um, between thermal or fossil fuels and renewable is sometimes uh, very unclear. Uh, the, the, the red tapes that it involves, especially uh, for securing licenses and so on, could be very, very challenging. And of course, there's a recent um, economic, social economic issues which is affecting most economies in Africa who are based, who earn their income largely from natural resource. You have the uh, local currency incompatibility. We have the hard currency illiquidity. Um, there's limited access to patient capital. Building infrastructure requires a lot of money. Um, putting, putting, putting all of this together into Africa, it's even more, uh, it's even more so because with Africa, businesses and projects competitive and bankable projects are slow in coming. And so to do this, you need capital that are patient enough to allow a um, uh, gestation period that you need to put together projects that become bankable, reliable, and sustainable. Um, the power sectors in most countries in Africa is very, very nascent. For example, in Nigeria, uh, the sector just been privatized in 2013. In South Africa, they started much earlier, in 2008, um, Ghana is, is slow in coming, uh, but so all of this in other parts of the world, especially in the first world, you'll find that the past sector has been there for decades. So the learning process has been there, uh, you know, it's become that of a permanent design. So there's a lot of challenges out there. But my question is, what can we do better? Um, how, how do we better create the enabling environment? Policies by the government that would encourage and engender confidence in investing in Africa. The fiscal policies, uh, such as uh, tax holidays, um, infrastructure is about business. We need to be able to make money. So cost-reflective tariff, especially for renewable, is critical. Um, if, if, if we can make a decent return on investment, it's going to be difficult for, for us to find investors. So governments everywhere in Africa is thinking seriously about this. And also, how do we mitigate the risk? There's the evident risk, the happening risk, the risk that are known to all. Um, you know, are there better ways 
that is suited to the African environment, that we can think about how we mitigate risk without making it too cumbersome for those, for those uh, countries. The DFIs, how much role? How, how better can DFI support the private sector in investing in Africa? In the end, it's about partnership. It's about commercial enterprise. If we can, again, if we can find very strong, multiple private companies in Europe, in America, in China, and elsewhere, who are willing to partner with very strong local partners uh, with a long-term view to this investment, then things will start to look brighter. Can government truly in Africa create independent agencies such as regulators that can act independent of influence? They can truly be um, unbiased in terms of how the sectors is both developed and regulated? Uh, this is some of the questions that goes through my head. Now, renewable. For Genesis, renewable is a very recent story. So we started out in 2005 building thermal plants. Um, and today we've built thermal plants in about five countries in Africa, largely gas-fired. Uh, but the core of our vision, which is lighting up Africa one community at a time, is truly exemplified by a renewable energy solution, where you can solve the two problems that I see. There's an access problem, and there is availability. Access is for those over 600 million Africans that don't even see electrons. Um, we're still, you know, they're still living in the dark ages of, of burning bush and biomass and all sort of uh, inconsistent energy sources. So reliable is very, very um, renewable energy is very important to Genesis on how we achieve what we do. This, all of this story creates great opportunity for all of us. Two, two or three of every African, like I mentioned, has no access to electricity. Um, institutions such as the African Development Bank, the World Bank, IFC, uh, the US government, Power, Power Africa Initiative, all focused on leapfrogging Africa directly from biomass, as we have today, or inefficient energy sources, straight into not just greener, green economies. Um, the hydro resources is huge. We have thousands of possibilities on small hydro, medium-sized hydro, uh, big hydro. Um, and of course, we say that there are many investors, there are many uh, big corporates who are now investing, who have made a good story out of investing in Africa. And Genesis is proud to, be, to also have some of these big corporates as partners. And we have developed projects, they're producing reliably, we have great feedback from the customers, uh, there's decent return on investment, and we have very strong government support in the, um, in the communities we're in. So there is that energy shift that is happening. Hybrid solutions, a combination of renewable and thermal, 100% reliable uh, energy solutions is driven by solar, for example. Now, this, in time past, was unthinkable. How do you, how do you cohabit uh, both solar or wind with uh, thermal? But more and more of this is happening. So collection of data is becoming more transparent. There's basis for us now to make judgments. Uh, there are reference points in, in projects. The data centers that's been set up across Africa. And so for the keen and weary investor, you have much to look at. So in conclusion, there's a lot of challenges uh, about investing in Africa, but this by itself also creates opportunity. That if you look seriously, if you look very tediously, and if you find the right partners, you'll find yourself a place to live in. Welcome to Africa. Thank you.